Hey, hey, welcome to Bethel Church. How many guys are excited tonight? Come on, why don't you go ahead and stand? We're gonna open up service tonight and get ready to go into his presence. How many guys know that the fire of God is already here burning? Amen. Amen, amen. All-consuming fire. How many of you have been a part of our fasting and prayer this week at Bethel Church? Oh, we are so expectant. We had hundreds of people joining us online as well. How many God One kid fasted peanuts. That's just awesome. You know? Uh, and the Lord sees that. That's what's amazing about it. <laughs> so, man, tonight God's going to move in power. You know, this week... Ending the fast, ending the fast, last night I watched a video, Jesus Image video, where Michael Koulianos interviewed John Kilpatrick, Brother Ewan, Benny Hinn, and the dean, the dean from Regent University, and it was all on the value for the Word of God. I'm still trying to recover. It was so powerful. But Benny Hinn quoted a verse in Isaiah 66, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, Heaven is my throne. And earth is my footstool. Who will make a house for me? Like, come on, really? And this is, I can't remember exactly, but then he says, you know, who, where can we find a resting place for God? And God's saying, he who has a contrite heart and trembles at my word. Whew. It, it rattled me in my guts. I could just feel it. At the end of this fast, it was just this sovereign moment where I was just, it was just like taking me into prayer, but like, Man, God wants to be, you know, he, the God, who, like Bill said this morning, the God who's everywhere wants to be somewhere. And he wants to live inside of us. And the place that he lives is in a heart that's contrite and humble and trembles at the word of God. Woo. And I felt this morning, last night or this morning, I can't remember, as I was praying into that, that if I tremble at God's word, I won't tremble at anybody else's word. So it's time as we worship. The Word and the Spirit are never separated. The Spirit of God rides on the Word of God. And as we lift up the Word of God, the Spirit of God's gonna move tonight in power. We're gonna be marked tonight. There's gonna be signs and wonders. The Holy Spirit is gonna move. And my wife's gonna say something now. <laughs> That's so good. I did the pastoral pat. That's what that is, honestly. We are so expectant. A, the Lord is here. And we've been praying because we know that we aren't maintaining ground in the spirit. We are taking ground in the spirit. Amen. And it's so significant because tonight we didn't really, you know, we're not that smart. We don't strategically plan very well. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. But tonight we have all of the senior leaders of our Bethel churches all over. Bethel Austin, Bethel Valparaiso, Bethel Cleveland, Bethel New Zealand, Bethel New York. Bethel Atlanta, like all of our Bethel senior leaders are here tonight with us. And we know that there's going to be not just us investing in them, but they have come to bring an impartation to the Bethel house tonight. And so you're going to see them. They're going to minister tonight powerfully with us. So just put your hands up like, God, I'm ready. I'm a target. I'm a target tonight, Holy Spirit. Go ahead and lift up prayers right now, saints. You've been praying all week. Just begin to lift up prayers of hunger and dependency on him tonight. Jesus, we thank you. <laughs> then where else can we go for you alone have the words of life? And tonight, Jesus, we feast on you as our living word tonight. We lift up our lives as worship in response to who you are tonight, Jesus. Woo, would you move, would you move, would you move? Amen, amen. I want you to turn to the person next to you. I want you to begin to release the fire of God on that person that needs it. They're a target for the love of God tonight. Welcome them to the power of God, to His presence. Woo! Just release His fire. Release utter dependence on the Holy Spirit tonight. Thank you, God. Let's worship family. The 
Better is on.
like Jesus. There is no one like Jesus. No one comes close to Jesus Christ, the majestic glory, the Savior of the world, the King of kings, the one who went all the way up Calvary Hill for you and defeating the powers of darkness, the one who loves you so much, he gave his life to you. How many know across this room, there truly is no one like Jesus Christ. Right across this room, what I wanna ask of you, is that confession of adoration, that confession of Jesus. There is really no one like you. I want you to find a place in the depths of your soul, down deep in your heart, where those words come from, a deep place to say, Jesus, there is no one like you. I want you to find even a deeper place I want you to begin to sing that out. place your hand upon your heart right now and just 
just join with me in a prayer, simply adoring Jesus. Jesus Christ, Lord and Saviour, Creator of the world, we thank You for Your magnificence. We thank You for Your glory. We thank You, God, for Your love that came to the world, God, and reached into the world, and reached into our hearts, God, and reached into our lives, God. We thank You, Lord. We thank You so much that we can truly say, there is no one like You in all of the heavens. There is no one like You in all of the earth. Nothing compares to You, Lord. Nothing compares to You, Lord. We praise Your Name, God. We declare that You are worthy, worthy Jesus. We join with heaven and we say, Jesus, You are worthy, that worthy is the Lamb indeed. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Lord. So right across this room, from the front to the back and from the left to the right, I would just like us to give a shout, a clap, a sound of praise worthy of Jesus. so much. Hey, can we give our worship team just massive appreciation as well? Wow. So my name is Andy. I'm from Bethel Church in New Zealand. And right now we're shifting over and we have the church news. The fast is over. So glad you're in church today. <laughs> Here's this week's church news. Well, since the fast is over, it feels right that we're talking about this event coming up. <laughs> yes, it does. Join me, Jay Valton, others, uh, men in the church for our men's breakfast coming up on Saturday from 8 to 10 at the Twin View Sanctuary. It's going to be terrific food, uh, fellowship, and then a good message as well. Come and be a part. In February, we're hosting our prophetic conference with Chris Vallotton, Ben Armstrong, and guest speakers Julian and Katia Adams. It's going to be a powerful time, so join us by registering at Bethel.com forward slash events. Well, I know this fast has been meaningful for me, and I, I pray for yeah. many of you as well. It's been powerful for our whole church. I want to thank the whole team that's kind of rearranged their schedule to make space to feast on the Lord. And our church team did a beautiful job. And thank you for joining us in the fast as well. If you heard something from the Lord or have something to share because of your, your communion with the Lord, with the leadership of the church team, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at testimonies at Bethel.com. We'd love to read them and just appreciate what God has been saying to you during the season. So Dan, are you hungry for maybe a little bit more fasting? It's possible. Tell me what you're thinking. <laughs> so we have this amazing equip class um, on fasting that is being led by Jenna Zent. She's one of our deacons and the class starts on February 6th. It's for four weeks. If you're wanting to go deeper in mm -hmm. understanding of fasting or maybe you didn't participate in the fast and you're like, I need, I needed help to understand mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the time and the place. So for more information and to register, go to Bethel.com forward slash equip. We hope you have an amazing week and look forward to seeing you next time. If you missed any of these announcements, you know where to find them. Go to Bethel.com forward slash church news. All right, all right, all right. It's offering time. Who's excited to give tonight? You can stand to your feet if you're willing and excited and ready to give. I don't know about you in your relationship with Jesus as it pertains to finances, but I feel like I've had the whole gamut with him. There are times where I'm sitting ready to give and the Lord says, empty your bank account. Give way, 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 way more than you can afford to give. I, I, I like those times, but I don't really like those times when I'm 
being honest just with me and Jesus sometimes. But of course, I long to be obedient, and so I do. But there's other times too where I feel like I have this pent up passion I want to give to the Lord. And, and out of this almost striving type mentality, the Lord sometimes will check my spirit and say, I want you to give less, less tonight. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Lord, help me to be obedient. And as I was just in worship tonight, I kept hearing the phrase just reverberate around my spirit. It's not the size of the gift that matters, but it's our perspective and awareness of the size of the God that we're giving it to. I'm pretty sure that the little boy in the multitude, when the disciples came to him and said, what do you have? And he said, well, I've just got this measly little lunch. I'm pretty sure in his earthly kingdom of this world mind didn't think that that was going to be enough to not only feed the masses, the multitudes that he was standing in, but to have 12 baskets left over. But if he only knew what the size of a king of kings and the Lord of lords can do with a little boy's lunch. And I just felt that tonight, as you come to give, obviously give in obedience, give in faithfulness, but also I want us to just be mindful, even before we give, to not just go through the motions of of, this is my tithe or this is my 20% or this is whatever it is that I give every week, but I want to engage with the fact that I am giving something to a king that can multiply it far beyond what I could ever ask, think, or imagine. Who has faith for that tonight? In Jesus' name. So as as we do that, we're gonna uh, declare together offering reading number four. Who loves to declare and believes that it shifts something in the spirit? I know I do. So let's, let's definitely declare together. Can we have that up on the side screen for us? Okay, let's do this together. I am powerful. And what I believe changes the world. So today I declare, God is in a good mood. He loves me all the time. Nothing can separate me from His love. Jesus' blood paid for everything. I will tell nations of what He has done. I am important. How He made me is amazing. I was designed for worship. My mouth establishes praise to silence the enemy. Everywhere I go becomes a perfect help zone. And with God, nothing is impossible. Amen. Amen. Nothing is impossible. So just over here on the screens, you're going to see ways uh, to give. You can scan that QR code if you're watching online. You guys know what to do. And if you're here in this room, uh, we love to rush the buckets. The buckets are up here uh, at the front. So as the band begins to play, um, just be careful because you might be giving a small lunch, but God might want to do great things with it. So why don't we rush the buckets as the music plays. Thank you, guys.
Amen, amen. Give it up for the worship team again. And yes, I'm Steve Backland. I've got a very special, yes, good to see everybody. I have a very special assignment tonight. We had Andy from Bethel, New Zealand close worship and so appreciate that. And one of my, one of the privileges that I have is I get to connect and be a main part of the six Bethel churches that are around the world. With Dave Harvey over here, Dave, give a wave, yes. <laughs> Through the Bethel Leaders Network. And we have four of the churches represented here tonight. Two are not here, Bethel Cleveland uh, with Steve Witt. We're, we're doing a um, event tomorrow and Tuesday for them and they will be here. And then Joel Powers and Sarah in Bethel, New York, they are not here as well, but we have some, just some really strong leaders. And here's our plan is this tonight. We, we sense there's hunger in the room. And so what I've asked, uh, I'm gonna ask the team, come on up, yep. And we'll introduce them in a moment. Uh, and I've asked them, why don't you give them a hand, by the way? Yeah, just welcome them. Yes. And <clears throat> these are important leaders part of our extended Bethel family. You can be seated and yeah, part of our extended Bethel family and uh, we just definitely want you just to get to know them and their hearts. But we also, we wanna turn them loose. <laughs> and and these, these leaders here are spiritually flammable. Oh <laughs> and and yeah, hey, are you guys ready? So they're going to release some things over you. Uh, get ready, prophetic words, words of knowledge, prophecy, Testimony. testimonies, impartations. And, and then when they're done, we've, there, there's two others, uh, Joaquin and Renee Evans from <laughs> Bethel, Austin, who are going to come up after them and they're going to minister the word tonight, and we're looking forward to that. And so why don't we just, we've got, we got two mics here. And uh, why don't we just start with you guys. This is Jason and Ange Hale from Bethel Valparaiso. <laughs> and what, what are you, what are you, as you're praying, what are you getting? Or what do you, okay. what do you want to share? So I'm going to trust God to kind of unpack it quickly. But over almost the last 30 years that we've been married, um, it's been a journey of increasing our family. Um, and in those years, there's been four miscarriages in a, in a birth, and now we're pursuing adoption. But I just want to release some encouragement and a testimony over anybody that's struggling in those areas because more than just having a child or adopting, there's been a lot that's been involved in the journey. And I just wanna release um, the testimony of being able to encourage yourself when you're feeling like your dreams aren't coming as fast as you want them to. There's been a lot that I've had to learn about trusting God in the process and um, knowing how to find things that would encourage myself. And also, um, instead of leaning away from him, which I've done at times, leaning into him. And so I just wanna just release over you or anybody that's struggling with infertility or anybody that's struggling with disappointment, with dreams that haven't manifested yet, I'm just gonna say that your journey is gonna be filled with trust that you're gonna know how to encourage yourself, that the Lord is gonna surround you with people that are gonna blow on your dreams and contend for your promises and that you will see promises fulfilled. Amen, say, I received that. Jason, what do you got? Yeah, this one's deeply personal to me. Anybody who struggles with headaches, stand up. Yeah, right now, migraines, just constant headaches. Um, I had about a three month headache recently and um, I just, I heard a word of knowledge and I stepped into it and the headache left 
and it hasn't come back. And I just release that over you right now. Yeah, today is the day of salvation for you. Today is the day. Even this moment, I just declare peace over each and every one of you right now. Yeah, receive that. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. yeah, just keep praying for them if you need to. Just receive that. Andy and Diana, so good to have you from New Zealand. Yes. What more you want to share, Andy? Such a joy and an honor to be here. It's such a privilege for us to come back into the mothership of Bethel Reading. Uh, I love that scripture that says that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of Jesus, which kind of gives us our job description. Find hell, go there, lay siege to it, and watch as the gates of hell crumble before the church of Jesus. It's really simple, find darkness, find hell, go there. So we, we go to some of the darkest areas of our city where the gangs run those suburbs. A quick testimony of going into a gang run suburb where uh, literally I've watched as police officers joke with gang members about the drugs that they're selling on the street. And um, we set up Bible studies and outreaches into those spaces. And I was on my way to a Bible study and there were two gang members, I won't mention the gang because I can get in trouble. And uh, sitting on the front steps, had to walk up the front steps, had my Bible ready for an amazing Bible study in this area. And uh, one of the, I say to one of the, the guys, Kia ora. And uh, he just looks at me with a big frown on his face, says, where are you from? I'm like, ah, I'm, I live in a place called Tutukaka. And I say, I'm from Tutukaka. He's like, no, no, where are you from? I'm like, um, I'm trying to answer your question. I'm from Whangarei, which is where our city, our church is. He's like, no, where are you from? And he stands up, puffs out his chest. And uh, I think, uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> but that sense of the presence of Jesus that goes with you into the darkness is so strong. And this elderly woman inside the house calls out, is that Andy out there? Is that Andy out there? She was the woman that I was coming through the Bible study with who just given her heart to Jesus. And uh, this gang member knew that woman and let, let me in. So I go sit into the house and there's two other women there and this gang member comes in. There's a beer on the table. How many know Bible studies with beers on the table? <laughs> It's a pretty exciting Bible study. These guys have just given. Anyway, and um, so this gang member, he picks up the beer and one of the women snatches it out of his hand and he's angry. So he does this haka and he's chanting. Now a haka, one aspect of a haka is it's a war dance. I'm sitting in the chair and he's doing this war dance. So... <laughs> So one of the women says, give him back the beer, give him back the beer. So he's doing this haka like this. And honestly, one of the most funny things I've ever seen. She places the beer, as he's doing this, the beer goes into his hand and he continues the haka. Then, then a cigarette gets put into the other hand, beer in one hand, cigarette in the other, doing the haka. This 60 plus year old grandma turns him around and literally kicks him out the door. We lock the door. We open up the Scriptures to John chapter 3, verse 16 and weep our way through as the Spirit of God descends into that Bible study. Now, about five weeks later, I'm in another drug house. I'm not participating in the drugs. There's no high like the most high. Yeah. Unnecessary for me. Come on. And he's there. That same gang member is there. There are four seats in the house and I'm the fifth person that's just walked into the house. I have done nothing to that mem uh, gang member. I haven't said anything to him except for we have activated prayer walking and prayer driving into that suburb. This gang member who before was doing the intimidating haka, five weeks later gets off his chair, brings it over to me, 
has me sit down in his chair, in this chair, and goes back and stands. The Spirit of God begins to work in the darkness. Then, five weeks after that, he invites me into his house. I'm in a gang pad. And a man begins to break down in tears at the power of the love of the gospel of Jesus in a gang pad, hiding, hiding his tears as the love of God is hitting his heart from all the gang members around him, inviting me into his home to set up another Bible study, which is another light in the darkness. Woo! Was anyone imagining like a wild animal when he said bear? The, ki- the Kiwi accent is like just bear, bear, bear. Um, um, I just wanted to release a word that I felt God gave me, but I believe it's for some other people here. And um, on our way up to Reading, we went and did the kind of tourist thing and went around Death Valley. And it is it was stunning and amazing. And one of the things that I noticed the most when we were there was just the silence. And if you've ever been there, it's just so quiet. You just can't hear anything. And so I'm standing on the sand dune in Death Valley and I can't hear a thing. It's just complete silence. And I feel the Holy Spirit say there's so much peace in death. And I felt like tonight to release this word around, if you've lost your peace, it might be time for some things to die. And... I know it's for me, but I think it's for people out here too. And there's this thing around dying to self and dying to striving and hustle and just control and holding on to all those things because we're scared and I get that, but I feel like the Father's saying it's time to let it go. There's so much peace for you in the letting go. There's so much peace for you in the dying. And when you let go... That's when you find life. So shall I pray? Yeah, or if that, you feel that works for you, stand up. If, you, <laughs> if that's you, if you would think you Diana's stand speaking up, to I you right now, just that. stand up. Yeah, so, wow, Jesus. Wow, Father. <laughs> Jesus, would you just release peace over this house tonight? God, would you highlight to us places where we need to die, where we need to let go of self, where we need to let go of control. God, would you do a work in us tonight? Father, just release new measures of peace. God, we need your peace. Lord, show us how. And God, just remind us that when we let go, you give us so much more in return. So peace, peace, peace to this house, to every heart, to every person standing tonight, Jesus. Do a work in us, Father. Amen. Yeah, just say, I receive it. We got Lauren Brownlee and her husband Brent, leaders at Bethel Atlanta. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I have a testimony that's been happening at Bethel Atlanta, and I just wanted to share it and impart it. Um, I would say about a decade ago, Paul Manwaring came to us, and he said, there are people in your body that want a baby and haven't had one yet. And he invited up people up front and two years in a row, he went after this, him and Sue. And we had a baby boom. I mean, many, many pregnancies. And flash, fast forward to now, and we felt the Lord invite us into revisit the foundations, revisit the testimonies of old that are supposed to be in this foundation now, like pull on them and bring them into today. And so. We went after that testimony again, and the, the word was, anyone who wants a baby gets a baby. And we, have, we are in the middle of baby boom number two. We have so many pregnancies, like miracle babies happening in our midst. There's a testimony a couple of weeks ago, this young girl, she was in the service and she's like, anyone who wants a baby gets a baby? Well, what about my aunt? What about my uncle? They've been trying my whole life. And so they go home and they pray as a family and they get a call pretty soon following, we're pregnant now. And so just, it's happening. And I I just feel led to release that on anybody who is married and who wants a baby. (laughs) 
So, yeah. Got one. Are you going to pray? Yeah, just those of you who want to receive it, say, I receive it. <laughs> yeah. Try it out tonight. <laughs> Um, so when, when we first met Steve down here and he was telling us what we were going to do tonight, he said, just either a word of knowledge or prophetic word or something, just tell the, like, what's going on right now. And so the first thing that popped into my head when you said that was something I told Lauren on the airplane on the way here on Friday was, uh, Friday morning, I was, uh, I wasn't being particularly spiritual. Like I was like, I think I was running or something and to listen to music and, and like, you ever had this thing where all of a sudden out of the blue and when a moment when you're not necessarily just directly talking to the Lord, he says something and you're like, that just happened. And uh, so he said, he said, the desert season is over. It's time to build. And, um, and now in context, like last year was a challenging year for some of the people in our, our world, us and uh, included. And, um, and so I was having a conversation with a good friend of ours about um, more about businesses that, you know, we had started and that kind of thing, just different things going on. And we we're like, man, I really feel like the Lord pushed us into this and we, you know, had wise counsel and saw it and it like, but sure doesn't feel that way. And, um, cause it didn't feel that way at all. And, uh, and so things have started to turn around a little bit for a lot of people in our lives, right? Like last year was super challenging year, really hard, not bad. Those are different, uh, but it was challenging. It was hard. And, um, so when I heard the Lord say this, I was like, okay, that was out of the blue. I'm just gonna believe it, I'm gonna take it. I called him immediately, so I was also walking at that point. And, uh, and I was like, hey, here's what I heard. I think it's time to build because, now here's the caveat. Normally when we hear the Lord say things like, the desert season is over, we're like, yes, that's awesome, and it's encouraging. It wasn't particularly meant to be solely encouraging. It was actually more like when your boss says, hey, it's time to get to work. It was kind of like that. <laughs> And so that's what I told Lauren on the airplane. I was like, hey, he said that the desert season is over. It's time to build. She's like, that's great. And I'm like, but it's time to get to work. She's like, I feel like we've been working. And I'm like, yes. I was like, however, I was like, it feels different when you can like see the fruit of what you're putting your hands to, as opposed to just pushing, 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 you know? And so, so it, was, it was encouraging in the sense that it made me want to get busy, right? And uh, so anybody here, whether it's in business, whether it's in with the school of ministry or ministry in general, um, or in relationships, family, that kind of thing, if you've got things you've been pushing on and pushing on and it feels like, I don't know why this feels so stagnant, stale, whatever you, words you want to put to it, um, the desert season is over and it's time to build. Yeah. And so, um, so if that's you, just put your hands out. You can stand up. You can do whatever you want to do, yeah, whatever you feel up. like doing. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> but I just pray for, uh, number one, wisdom for, keep going, okay. Just wisdom over all of you, like just hear from the Lord, get wisdom and just take, take the, like, just take the steps that he tells you to take. And I just pray it's a season to build, it's a season to grow, it's a season to put your hands to work and watch the fruit of what the Lord's given you. Yeah. And, uh, and God, we just pray, we just pray for your wisdom and for your words and, uh, and where to put our hands to work next. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Amen. He's doing it. All right. What else we got? Any other quick words you guys want to release? All right. This one is another word of knowledge. Um, it's very specific. I feel like, I don't know if it's Bell's palsy or there's a nerve issue in somebody's face. There's a twitch. There's a tick. There's something. If that's you, stand up. Yeah, over here. There's multiple people in the room right now. Yeah. We, we have some other words of knowledge, too. Just stay standing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know, Lauren, okay. you had words of knowledge. Yeah. Um, if you have an autoimmune disease, I'd love to pray for that. All right. Autoimmune issues, stand and stay standing. There was a, like a shunting force across the side of your face, painful, and a, a result of that is ringing in your ears. All right, anybody else? Um, either in a dream or you've been actually physically doing it lately, you were either in a dream or you're working with some nets and you're untying knots in a net. Whoa. Yeah. This one has to do with dying, as Diana said earlier. Um, I had a word, if, you're, if you are currently suffering with addiction, um, confession is your key. Confession is your key. Go to a leader today. 
go to a leader today and the door gets opened and you walk out. Why don't you pray for those who are standing, Jason, just release, he- release healing over them. Yeah, if you want to go lay a hand on somebody who's standing, yeah, you're the ministry God, team come. as well. You know what to glory do. Glory of God, come right now. Come and touch your sons and your daughters right now. Set them free. Set them free from all captivity. Yeah. Yeah, right now. Nerve issues be healed in Jesus' name. Autoimmune. <laughs> Flee through the love of Christ right now. Yeah, love come flooding in right now. Yeah, ringing in the ear, be silenced. Trauma be gone right now. Yeah, barrenness broken right now. Your womb be open ah, and be hospitable to the seed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, I prophesy over those who were the net and the untying of the knot and the net meant something that you are in a season of discipling and reaching into the world of harvesting harvesters. And there's a, there's a fresh raising up of new harvesters to go out into the harvest and you have a significant part to play in that. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. You guys appreciate this team? Yes. So good. By the way, anybody uh, just, you know, you got healed tonight, just give a wave. I know some of those, it's going to take a little, a little bit to figure that out. I I was in a meeting in in Phoenix just a, a few weeks ago, and my granddaughter was with me and she released healing over backs. And um, cause she had been in youth group here at Young Saints and had seen an ankle get healed and she was just so excited. So she's on my ministry, she's 15 and she's on my ministry team and she releases healing. Uh, she gets a word of knowledge about backs and eight people stand up. Nobody said in the moment that they received healing, I said, but if anybody gets their, gets healing that manifests in the meeting, interrupt me while I'm preaching. Yeah. <laughs> That's dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, and so right at the end, when I'm ready to close, uh, someone says, hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. You said interrupt you. My back was healed. <laughs> Two other backs. So somebody said, that happened to me too in the meeting. In the meeting. And, and, and there's something, that even in this meeting, it says, lay hands on the sick, they will recover. There's recovery happening in the meeting. And, I, you know, I don't know if Joaquin wants you to interrupt, but, uh, you know, you, it's some, let somebody know. But I have the privilege of introducing um, the speaker tonight. I know many of you know Joaquin Evans and uh, Renee, his wife, and they're, they've been such a big part of this Bethel family for so long. I don't know how many years you're on staff, Joaquin? 11. 11 years. And I remember Renee from um, Australia and she was in my church leadership track and uh, years ago and just saw just something powerful on them. And then they got married and who that, that was, that was good. Yes. <laughs> and then the Lord called them to go plant a church in Austin Texas and took a a team with them from here and they are just such great leaders in our movement uh, just glory releasers powerful equippers of the saints uh, just uh, carry this culture uh, so well and 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 I when I when I heard they were speaking tonight I got excited so why don't you welcome Joaquin and Renee Evans. Thank you, thank you. Stay standing. Hey, can we give Jesus praise one more time? Come on, lift it up to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We love you in this place. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. So good to be back. So good to be here and to see all these hungry faces. Anybody hungry for Jesus? Come on, I thought so. Well, uh, my wife's got a couple of things she's gonna share uh, before we jump in, so. Yes, Take hello. It, away. it is good to be home. Wow. You know, we went into it, the new building today uh, where they are building out a collier and we got to write on the walls. And um, I just wrote a little thing about our family and just, just said, you know, we were marked in this place. This is where we met the Holy Spirit and we were marked by the Holy Spirit. And it's just been such an incredible part of our journey um, individually and then uh, married with our children. So it's been incredible and we love coming back. I actually just have a testimony that I want to release tonight. Who needs a financial miracle in their life? Wow. (laughs) Awesome. Well, you're going to want to stay tuned because I have a testimony that I want to release. Um, You know, we moved into a building right in the middle of COVID, which, you know, in hindsight, maybe wasn't a great idea, but, you know, didn't know that COVID was coming. So we got into a building and ended up getting a construction loan and several other things. And just because of different things that accumulated, like, you know, budgets being blown out because of COVID and trucks going into different states to get material. And we ended up with this construction loan. And, you know, we came to this place last year where we were like, we got no extra, like nothing. And we needed a miracle from the Lord. And you know, we were praying, we were inviting our intercessors to pray, we were thinking of ideas and just trying to get as creative as possible to create some income. And we listened to a sermon by Pastor uh, Robert Morris. Does anyone know of him from Gateway Church? And he actually preached a message and we were so convicted during this message. And I wanna read this passage, passage of scripture. In Romans 1, 16, it says, And most of you know this, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. And we often stop there, but there's actually a second part to that verse. And it goes on and it says, To the Jew first. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. And we just had this conviction in our heart to give to Israel. And we actually, this was before the war broke out in Israel. We actually purposed in our heart to tithe off our five-year anniversary conference. Uh, We didn't have the money to do that. So it was just in faith. We were like, all right, let's do this. And so then we got word the following week that obviously um, Israel had been invaded and we took up an offering for just people on the ground, first responders, as a total for our, um, the tithe of the conference and that offering, we sent $10,000 to ministries in Israel that are taking the gospel to the Jews. And that same weekend, that $10,000, there was a check in our offering for $10,000. He, he replaced the offering within 24 hours. Yeah, and it doesn't stop there, it gets even better. The following week we were at our offices and a lady brings like one of those furniture dollies you know, she wheels it in, there's this little box. And we're like, why you got this little tiny box on a furniture dolly? Anyway, she came and she gave silver bars, solid silver bars as an offering of obedience. And that was about, I don't know, 13,000 and some change. 13,000, yeah. Yeah. Several weeks later in the offering, we got a check for half a million dollars. Come on, half a million dollars. Come on, Jesus, do it again. Do it again. Yes, Lord. (laughs) We needed $39,000 more to close out that loan, that construction loan after that half a million came in. And that morning at church, our congregation raised $96,000. The following weekends, we got another check in the offering for $18,000. And I tell you, God is just getting started. 
Amen. But I want to release this because I believe it's yeah. a key. Come on, release We this. gave first to Israel. We sowed in to the Jewish people, amen. It is biblical. It is a foundational principle that when we give first to the Jew, when we take the gospel to the Jew, that God will bless us. Come on. And we are all part of the same family, right? We've all been grafted in. We all have. But there is something special on His people, the Jewish people. And so I just wanna encourage you, if you feel led or if you feel this stirring in your spirit or this conviction and you need a financial miracle, I just wanna challenge you to give to the Jew first. I believe that we should tithe into our church, but I believe that we should give offerings. And our family now, our personal family, but also our church family has set up to give first every month to the Jewish people, to take the gospel to the Jews. There is power in it. And I just wanna release that in Jesus' name. Why don't you once again stand up if you need a financial miracle and I wanna pray for you. Thank you, Lord. God, we thank you that you are the God of more than enough. We thank you that your storehouses are filled with Come abundance, on. Father. And we trust Come in on, you, Lord. Jesus. We trust in you. And we ask you to just open up the storehouses fire, of heaven tonight. Fire, Surprise fire, us fire, with your fire. goodness and with your glory. And we thank you, Father, for even tonight there being a release of financial testimonies in this room. I just declare that bank accounts are gonna have money in them that you haven't seen before. I declare you're gonna get checks in the mail. And hey, for us, it started with $10,000. It ended with half a million, but it started with 10,000. So I just wanna say, if you get a $2 check in the mail, celebrate it like it's half a million dollars, amen? Amen. We all know that what we give thanks for in the kingdom increases. And so I just want to bless you with that testimony and just say, do it again, Jesus. Come on. Amen. So good. Come on, do it again, Jesus. Some Again, say, do it again, Jesus. Come on, thank you, Jesus. How many people know faith releases more faith? And breakthrough releases more breakthrough. I can, I can feel breakthrough in the atmosphere. I can, I, can, I can smell it in the atmosphere. It's like when rain is on the horizon, you can smell it when it's coming even before it lands. And I can, I can smell that in the atmosphere. It's the day of breakthrough for some people in the room right now tonight in Jesus' name. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Financial breakthrough. Yes, Jesus. She, Renee mentioned it, but every, every gift, we just gave God thanks for it like it was the most amazing thing that we'd ever seen. And we knew when the silver came in, it was like, oh, this, lady, this sweet lady. And it was truly a widow's might. It was like her savings she gave to us. And, and uh, we're like, we're crying with her in the lobby and we're praying for her and she's praying for us. And we're like, oh my goodness, we can't believe this is happening. But we're like, God, we know that the silver precedes the gold. <laughs> Maybe you've heard this before, but what you give thanks for in the kingdom increases. You've probably heard that before. Come on, it's the day of breakthrough. Come on, let's just make a declaration. Let's just say breakthrough in the atmosphere in Jesus' name. How many people believe that God is good? How many people believe that God's presence is in this place? Ah, oh, God's presence is in this place, which is why we love this place, amen? Why we're all, that's why we all came to this place. And, and I moved here in 2003 and uh, started school of ministry in 2003 because of the presence of God in this place. You know what? The presence of God never gets old. I'll tell you what, it's so good to be back here. I love it. I love just driving up the hill. You just feel the presence. It's like, oh yes, I love it. Thank you, Jesus. So refreshing. <clears throat> yeah, as they said, we got, we got sent out 
six years ago, 2017, to plant uh, Bethel Austin. And so I've been back for various things, but first time getting to preach uh, on a weekend here since, since then. And so last time I preached, I had more hair and less gray, but uh, God's in the wisdom. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. And so many good things have been happening. The moment of breakthrough. Words of knowledge been given already, but if we're in the presence of God, and again, how many people believe that we're in the presence? And how many people know that his presence is him? His presence is not a side attribute. It's not a side expression. His presence is actually God entering, invading the place that you and I are in. It's the king of the universe choosing to share himself with us. And if he's good and his presence is him, then it's impossible to have his presence come and not have good things happen. Come on, I believe that those words, I believe many people are gonna just find that you are healed tonight as we go on. How many people know the word never returns void? Come on, Jesus. He's good. I I saw a couple of things too. I saw um, on the side of the neck, I saw someone you had experienced like whiplash, but it was from the side. And like, you got a whiplash mo- motion and it left pain uh, in, your, in your neck. And Jesus is healing that tonight. You seem very overwhelmed with that. The God is doing miracles in our midst. <clears throat> How many people know that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? <clears throat> but he wants to be the God of today more than yesterday or forever. You know, every day you wake up, it's today. That's the only moment that you have with God is today. We get to celebrate what he did yesterday. We get to look forward to what he's gonna do tomorrow. But every day we have with God is today. How many people believe he's good? How many people believe he's the healer? How many people believe he's not just the healer yesterday? Uh, that, uh, that, that didn't go well. I, I'll try over here. How many people believe he's not just the healer yesterday? Not just the healer tomorrow, but he's the healer right now, today. Somebody, it's like carpal tunnel, but it's on the right hand, uh, the right hand, and it's going on the outside of uh, the hand from the, the wrist down to that area. God's healing that right now, tonight, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Migraines are jumping off right now in Jesus' name. Someone, someone, yeah, come on. Thank you, Jesus. Someone, um, you, you had your jaw wired at some point. You had your jaw wired, and I don't think it's wired anymore, but there's still some complications with that. And God is bringing healing to you tonight. Does that make sense to someone? At some point you had your jaw wired. <clears throat> it's not wired anymore, but there's still some complications. Yeah, you right there? Come on, Jesus. Father, I just think, just put your hand on it right now. Father, I just think, whoo. Yep, there it is. Grace upon grace in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. We just bless what you've already done in Jesus' name. We thank you for your goodness. And we just say pop in Jesus' name. Yeah, be released in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. We love your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, if you start noticing some significant breakthrough, just give me a wave. If you're noticing some significant breakthrough, I want you to check it out though. Thank you, Jesus. He's so good. (laughs) How many... (laughs) How many people know that God, you, God loves to use the, the most unsuspecting moments and sometimes the most unsuspecting people to do the most amazing things? You know, when I was on staff here, I got to develop the healing rooms here and, 
you know, we had obviously people still come from far and wide to get, you know, prayer ministry for whatever you name it. And, uh, you know, sometimes as the director of his people would like, oh, I want to have, I want to have that person pray for me. I want to have the, the leader pray for me. And, you know, listen, if I prayed for you two or three times and nothing happened, I'll tell you to go find a six-year-old and have them pray for you. Why? Because God loves to use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Come on, Jesus. And I actually just felt like as I was getting up here to, that I was supposed to share this testimony and then maybe we'll get into the message. We'll see. But uh, when I was in first year school of ministry uh, back in two, 2003, we got some students in the room. All right. <laughs> when I was in first year school of ministry, amazing experience. But I went, um, I went snowboarding just with some friends one one day, and I and I tried to do, uh, you know, tried to ride a rail and just trying to get crazy, you know. And uh, and I fell off this rail and hyperextended my arm, and it, and it hit the metal rail on the way down, and then it hyperextended. And I never went to the hospital, but I think I broke something because I could feel as big piece of bone moving around in there. And, it, and I was in excruciating pain. I mean, I like, I couldn't, I couldn't move it. I couldn't move it more than five degrees in either direction. And like, I couldn't, I had to drive one handed. Like I couldn't take off, you know, my shirt. It was, it was terrible. But I'm like, I'm in school of supernatural ministry. So my friends who are with me, they're like, you gotta go to the hospital, you gotta get it checked out. And I'm like, no, I'm going to school tomorrow. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going to the doctor, I'm going to school. <laughs> and I just, I just made this commitment with God, right? It doesn't have to be like this all the time, but internally, I'm just like, I'm gonna get this thing healed. Like, I wanna see this God, like, I don't care what it takes, I wanna get this thing healed. I'm not going to the doctor, I'm not going to the hospital. And so I said, I, I, I made this commitment with God. I said, God, I'm gonna get this thing, I commit to get this thing prayed for 10 times a day minimum until it gets healed. And you know, in an environment like this, that's not that hard actually, you know, you just like turn around to anyone, you know, next to you, any, anyone who can walk basically, they can pray for you, right? And so all through school, just through the day, I'd just be like, hey, real quick, I just pray for my elbow and pray for my elbow. And like day after day after day after day, like prayer after prayer after prayer after prayer after prayer. And I'm talking about breakthrough right now. But uh, it went on like this for 30 days. Minimum, 10 times a day, sometimes more. So that means I got my elbow prayed for 300 times and nothing happened. <laughs> I mean, my roommates were sick of me, you know? I'm like going to bed. I'm like, oh, I only got to pray for eight times tonight. Hey, pray for it again. And like, but here's what happened. On the 31st day, it happened to be a Sunday night service like this. And at the end of service, you know, God was moving and the ministry line was up there and I'm still in excruciating pain. It was like no better. I, I really probably should have been had gone to the doctor, but I was just like determined. And I'm, sit, I'm standing up here and I'm scanning the ministry line and I'm looking for the most anointed person I can find. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, Holy Spirit discernment. I'm like, who's got the glory on them tonight? And I'm like, look in the line and my eyes cross this kid who is in our class and he was like the goth kid. <laughs> You know, like the kid who sits in the back and he like's got the hoodie on the whole time. And he's just drawing, right? He's got the big plugs in his ears and jet black hair and black fingernails. And I'm like, are you really saved? Like, you know, the rest of the class is like trying to pray for him and you know, and like my, my eyes float across him and Holy Spirit says him, have him pray for you. And I'm like, no, for real God, I need to get this healed. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Holy Spirit clear as day was like, you need to have him pray for you. And I was like, oh, 
okay, I guess so. And so I walked up with like, not a huge amount of faith at that moment. I was like, hey, you know, this, like the prayer line is full, but no one's at him for prayer. And uh, I was like, hey, would you mind like just praying for um, elbow real quick? And he's like, yeah, sure, no problem. And he puts his hands on, on my elbow to start to pray and it goes pop. And my, what just happened to my elbow? Oh my, like it's, it's completely healed. I, just, I get down on the floor, I'm doing push-ups. I'm like, oh man. <clears throat> I, le I left service and I went to the gym and I just started lifting weights just to make double sure. Completely healed. <laughs> what? What's the point? God will use the most unexpected moments the most unexpected circumstances, sometimes the most le least likely person to do the most amazing things. What's the point beyond that? You never know when you're on the precipice of your breakthrough. Listen, breakthrough releases more breakthrough and faith, more faith. Let's not stop going after God and his goodness. Come on, Jesus. Anybody got room for more of Jesus tonight? <laughs> Listen, we're, we're talking about tonight be the, the covenant of staying in the river of God. And, uh, you know, I came to school ministry, like I said, 2003, and, you know, Bill Johnson, um, you know, he, he still does it today, I think, but, you know, he said, come back in 20 years and let me know that you're still burning. I think he extended it, maybe it's 30 years now, I don't know, but, but you know, he used to always say that, come back in 20 years and let me know you're still burning. Well, I hit 20 years last year, come on, Jesus. And I got, and I, huh? He did, we sat at coffee and uh, I think we paid though, I don't know, he was out for our conference and, uh, and uh, that's all right. I'll bill him for it later, but um, but I got to sit with him and tell him I'm still burning. Come on, come on Jesus! <laughs> but the but the best is yet to come. Yeah. There's still more ahead. And so, six years ago, we got sent to Bethel, Austin, and wild, crazy, amazing ride. Like like just the most incredible ups and downs and wild, and Jesus showing up and Jesus showing off. And uh, man, we've had some amazing things happening. The presence of God is in this place. And our goal is to, is to mirror heaven and have the presence of God the same way in Austin. And, uh, and God is showing up. You know, we've had people who just, who just um, show up to church and get out of the car in the parking lot and get healed. Come on, Jesus. Listen, that's a good day at the office right there. <laughs> we had a man scheduled for knee surgery. He drives into town with his family. He's coming to get prayer. They don't even attend our church. He's coming to get prayer. He gets out of the car in the parking lot. Power of God hits his knee completely healed. Come on, Jesus. We had a, we had a lady, she had a, a severe rheumatoid arthritis. She lived an hour and a half away. Um, she heard about what God was doing at the church. And so she determined in her heart, said, I wanna to go to that church and I'm gonna get prayer. But that day, the way that the enemy does, right? He hit her real hard. She has real bad, you know, she's in a lot of pain, a lot of fatigue, but she's like, I'm going anyway. So she puts her walker in her car, gets in and drives the hour and a half uh, to Austin, pulls in the parking lot, gets out of the car, and uh, get, she gets out and then she opens the back door to get her walker out and the power of God hits her in the parking lot, completely heals her in the parking lot. Come on, Jesus. Come on, is God good? We had a couple on the verge of divorce. I love these testimonies. Listen, I love the testimonies when people lay hands on, on you and God does amazing things. I love it more when it just happens in his atmosphere. We had a couple on the verge of divorce, had, di had divorce papers, had divorce papers signed that they were ready to file, 
but they had heard that there was a new church in town. <laughs> they heard there was a new church where God was doing miracles and God was moving. And so they said, all right, God, this is your last chance. Those are dangerous words. <laughs> They said, we're gonna go to this church, we're gonna go to this service, either you touch us at this service or we're filing these papers tomorrow. They show up to church, they walk in the sanctuary, back doors of the sanctuary, they walk in, they don't even make it to the first row of chairs, they walk in the door and the love of God hits them, encounters them. They hit the wall, tears start streaming down their face, the love of God. Listen, it's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. They have an encounter with the living God, start crying, start weeping in that moment. God starts digging up stuff from their past, dealing with pain. He gives them a sozo right there. They start repenting to each other and they fall in love all over again. Right there. Come on, Jesus. Listen, they hadn't even made it to their seat yet. (laughs) Come on, now they lead a home group for us. Come on, Jesus. (laughs) Well, we've got a bunch of new agers saved, like leaders out of the new age, born again, and they're leading more new age people to Jesus. It's so fun. All right, last one, and then we'll we'll move on. And I don't know what we're moving on into. It's It's all God, right? It's all Jesus. We'll just move deeper, how about that? <clears throat> the last one, we have, a, we have a, a couple who, they attend the church, but their, their grown daughter at that time uh, was, not, was not living for the Lord, not serving the Lord, didn't have any interest in coming to church with them. Uh, but she had been diagnosed with, over the, the course of time, she had been diagnosed with a brain tumor and, and then separately diagnosed with leukemia. She had a brain tumor and leukemia, separate deals going on, and uh, still didn't want to come to church to get prayer. But her parents had faith. Come on, on. on, Jesus. It only takes a mustard seed. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. So her parents were at service and somebody gave a word of knowledge that applied to their daughter, so they stood up in proxy for their daughter. They stood up in faith, right? And just like we were doing earlier, people gathered around, there's several people standing, people gathered around them and started praying. And as people are praying, they get a text from their daughter, who's at her house in bed, gets a text from their, her daughter. And she's like, mom, dad, what's happening right now? Are you praying for me? And they're like, uh, yeah, actually we are praying for you right now, why? She's like, cause I was in bed and I felt this power come over me and I'm shaking and trembling in my bed right now. Come on, Jesus. And, uh, and uh, you know, funny enough, that convinced her to come to church. <laughs> <laughs> it's the kindness of God who leads us to repentance. So she shows up the next week to church. She comes up, she doesn't even make it a service, pre-service prayer. Her parents are like, hey, this is my daughter. Can you pray for her? Lay hands on her, bam, she goes out. Unconscious, gets up completely healed. Do- doctor confirmed, doctor confirmed. No brain tumor, come on, Jesus. No leukemia, totally healed. Now she's serving the Lord, gives her heart to Jesus, serving the Lord, loves Jesus. Come on. God is on the throne. God is good. Thank you, Father. How many people know that there's a river whose streams make glad the city of God? There is a river whose streams... (laughs) make glad the city of God. There is a river. (laughs) And that you are here, you've come to this place, you are in this place because God has called you to jump into the river. That God has called you to be in the river. It's not a time to be quiet. I'm just saying like that God has called you to be in the river because the river is his presence. The river is his goodness. 
The river is the flow of Holy Spirit on the earth that transforms this world to look like his world. The river of God, God has called you to jump in the river. But God has not just called you to jump in the river, God has called you to never get out of the river. To stay, to skit in the river, stay in the river, get comfortable in the river, breathe in the river, soak in the river, saturate in the river, carry the river until you're overflowing with the river, until everywhere you go begins to look like his world on earth. Thank you, Jesus. We're called to be in the river. Thank you, Father. We're called to be in the river and we're called to stay in the river. The Holy Spirit of God. John, John chapter seven, verse 37 and 38. You know this in John 7, 37, it says this, on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Do you know why I believe this is so important to Jesus? Because on that great day of the feast, it doesn't say that Jesus gathered his disciples and whispered to them, hey, if you're interested. (laughs) It says, listen, how many times does it say that Jesus stood up and shouted? (laughs) Listen, when you stand up and shout, you're trying to get people's attention. Jesus, on that great day of the feast, he stood up and shouted. Anyone who thirsts, let him come to me and what? Drink. And those who believe in me, as the scriptures have said, will have rivers of living water flowing out of their innermost being. Come on, thank you, Jesus. And this river that's flowing is gonna continue to flow. (laughs) The amazing thing about the river is that the longer you stay in the river, the deeper it gets. And And I believe that as I just, you know, just last year, 20 years, got to have coffee with Bill and say, Bill, I'm still burning. But I believe the true mark of my life isn't gonna be the last 20 years, but it's gonna be the next 20 years. Listen, come on, I am not satisfied. (laughs) There's always more. And the amazing thing is that God takes what, what he's already given, what you've already learned to partner with and he builds on it. From glory to glory. That God builds on it and that there's an accelerator that happens as the river gets deeper that there's more ahead than there is behind. Come on, Jesus. Listen, come on, listen. We've seen Holy Spirit empty out hospitals. I've seen it happen twice. Come on, Jesus. This side of the room isn't just gonna get excited about anything. That's all right. <laughs> listen, we've seen, we've seen Holy Spirit, the river of God. Someone say the river of God. (laughs) We've seen the river of God blow through a maximum security prison. (laughs) I wasn't gonna tell this story, but I got to you now. (laughs) In Nicaragua, missions trip, medical missions trip, and a a bunch of nurses that love Jesus, but they didn't have any experience with the miraculous, and so they invited me to come. <laughs> They're like, uh, they have no experience with the miraculous, and I have no experience with medicine, so it works out well. And and uh, they invited me to come, and they literally, they really didn't have 
any context for like, they liked the idea. They didn't know what to do with me, right? It was fine. It was fine. We were getting to know each other, but they would come and like, it was so beautiful, right? People would walk for two, three days, right? They'd set up these medical clinics right? out in the, out in the, the, the far out like jungle areas and so people would walk for, for days, these small towns from all over and it was amazing. They would set up their medical clinics and they like have their triage, you know, stay in there have their like their treatment area and then they have their area like where they get like their gift bags with like, you know, toiletries and stuff in it. And then they had me over here at the end of the line. <laughs> They're like, hey, after all that, yeah, if you're interested, this guy over here, he'll pray for you, right? <laughs> They just didn't have any context instil, until things started to happen. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Listen, when you get in the river, things can get crazy for a little while. <laughs> but listen, it's only crazy until something happens. I'm gonna preach myself happy tonight anyway. <laughs> listen, listen, I don't care if you flop or not, right? On the, but listen, when God moves, when you get in the river, the, we talked about it earlier, it's about giving up control. It's about dying to self to pick up him, all that he has, right? But it only looks crazy until brain tumors start to disappear. Until leukemia starts to disappear. Until people start getting healed, just getting out of their car, and then it doesn't seem crazy anymore. It seems like Jesus. It seems like heaven anyway. So people start getting healed and like, like real stuff. Like people like, you know, they can walk, their pain's gone, like they could bend and like, like deaf ears start opening. They're like, oh my goodness. And it was awesome. Over the week, like my station at the end started moving up the line. They like swap it with the gift bags and then swap it with the, about five days in, they put me at the front of the line. They're like, hey, pray for him. And if there's something left, we'll take care of it. And then, by, by, by the end of the week, the, la the, last, the last two days, they didn't even set up their shop. They just gathered the people and they said, do that thing that you do. But listen, what's the thing that we do? It's Jesus. <laughs> people are like, oh, with the eyelids. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> okay, I'll give you a second chance. Ready? What's the thing that we do? It's Jesus. And it's the river. That was a really long lead into, near the end of the trip, we went to this maximum security prison. And they, like, they made sandwiches and they did this whole thing. They were treating some patients and, and uh, we were in this area and, the, and uh, we got to share the gospel in this big, this big area. And it's like, they weren't individual cells as much as they were the massive cells with like 50 men in each of them. And like, I got to preach and a bunch of people got, got saved and, and, uh, and, it and it was amazing. <laughs> Whoa. I, re I remember, I remember this, I'll never forget as long as I live. There's a man who climbed up when we'd done all that and we'd hugged and we prayed and people got born again and we ministered and gave food. And there was a man who just got saved and he like, clutched, he grabbed one of the Bibles that we had to give out and, and we're saying bye and they're not wanting to let us go. And like, they're on the other side of the bars, but they're like reaching through, like holding on and don't go. And as we're leaving, this guy climbed up the windows. Our windows were real high. He climbed up and he's out the window. He's like, Joaquin, Joaquin, don't forget me. Remember me. And I'm just like, oh, how many people know the river changes lives? So we walked out of there and I thought we were done. I thought that was like the, the old prison. And then, and then the warden, this is little, he was kind of short a guy. He comes and he shows up. He says, come with me. And I'm like, uh, where are we going? Like, <laughs> are you upset with me? Like, what's the, and he just like grabs me. He takes me off from the rest of the group and he takes me. And then 
And then he takes me down these stairs, this building that's built halfway underground. And this, this building that we we're going into, I find out is the maximum of the maximum. It's like solitary confinement, but it's not solitary. It's like, it's built halfway underground and it's this long building and it only has a doorway on this end and a doorway on that end. And there's no light in the building except for, you know, the little square windows on, the, on, the, on either end of the doors, long building. And, it, and it's damp in there and it floods. And there's one guy that shows up with a, with a guitar and, uh, and he does like this song in Spanish and I'm just like taking this all in. It's so dark in there. You can hear men moving, but you can't see them. And, uh, and I'm just taking this all in. The guy's singing in Spanish. He's like singing real fast. He's singing in Spanish. And I'm like, what is happening? Like, what is this place? This is, I've never seen conditions like this. This is wild. And then the guy finishes his song and the warden looks at me. He goes, okay, you're on. And I said, on for what? <laughs> and, he, and he said, they told me you were gonna preach. I said, well, they didn't tell me. <laughs> and I, said, I had a decision to make in that moment. I was like, oh, I could let fear take over or I could let Jesus take over. And I, and I just decided to jump deep in the river that I had spent time cultivating relationship with my friend, my lover, my king, with God, with Holy Spirit. And I just jumped in the river and I said, I only got two ways to go. I can, I can, either, I can either crumble or I can just raise up and preach with all the unction and fire I have in me. So I just started preaching that God is no respecter of persons, that what he's done in, in, in any church in the country, he'll do right here, that all you have to do is say yes to Jesus. He'll remove your sins as far as the east is from the west, that he will encounter you right where you are. And I just preach. And I said, I said, to prove his love to you, he's gonna heal bodies all through this place right now. I said, any pain that you have in your body, I just need you to put your hand on your body. And I said, Holy Spirit, come. <laughs> That's a good prayer. <laughs> and then I said, Holy Spirit, go. <laughs> and I just released the river of his presence. And you could hear, like dark, right? You could see the, the, the maybe the six guys closest to you, but you couldn't see anything beyond that but all of a sudden you just hear men in the dark start to cry. And people start to cry out, oh, God just healed me. Oh, he did it for me. He did it for me too. And they just start shouting out all through the darkness. God just healed my body. And I said, I said, I said, listen, <clears throat> this is Jesus. <laughs> And he's done this because he wants a relationship with you personally. Yeah. He's not concerned about your circumstances. You give your heart to Jesus. He'll show up in this place with you every day. And I said, if that's you, I just need to know that you're there. I need to see your hands, stick your hands through the bar. There was one, there was one corridor, that's it. And hands started coming out through the sails all down the corridor and, and 56 of the 99 prisoners that place got born again, gave their hearts to Jesus at that moment. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. There's a river that's flowing. <laughs> Whoa. Thank you, Jesus. You're called to get in the river, but you're called to stay in the river. And you're called to never get out of the river. And listen, I want you in the river today. I want you going deep as you can with Jesus, deep as you can with the Holy Spirit. But I don't just want you in the river today. I wanna know that you're gonna be in the river 20 years from now. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. You know, <clears throat> there was, um, there was, my, it, my, it must have been my third year school of ministry, and I, you know, I'd been on 
been on a, a, a few missions trips by that point and um, seen God do awesome stuff. And, uh, but I was leading my first missions trip where I was solo leading the trip and, and I, took a, I took a team down into Mexico and, and we saw God do amazing things. It was, it was awesome. And, uh, and I, I remember a lady walked in a, a door uh, where service was going on and the lady, she walked in the side door of the church and just the grace of God was there. And, uh, and, and this doesn't happen to me every day, but she walked in and I just knew that I knew. I said, hey, I said, you right there, you have, um, you have a cancerous tumor in your left breast, don't you? And she's like, oh yes, through your know, translator. She's like, yeah, I said, God's healed you already. Turn around, go outside, check it out and let me know what happens. She goes outside about 30 seconds later, she comes back in weeping because the tumor was gone. And, um, and, uh, and, I, and this one, this one marked me forever. Um, this, we were doing a, a sort of Sunday morning service and the service was, it was already going. I don't know if it's halfway through or whatever, but this mom brings in her five-year-old son and, uh, and she's carrying him over both arms and he's just laying over her arms completely, completely limp. And uh, he's, he's alive, but he's li listless and limp and, and weak. And she brings him up to us and through translation says, um, you know, can you, my son has a tumor. Can you pray for him? And uh, in his belly, he had this huge tumor. It looked like he had a Nerf football protruding out of his stomach. It was like shaped like, like, like a Nerf football protruding out. And so, you know, the long story short, we're like, yes, let's pray. So a couple of us gather around and we start to pray. And, and after about three minutes or so of praying, it went from the half Nerf football down to a silver dollar. It just, in one moment, it wasn't like gradually, like, I think something's happening. Like, is it getting small? No, it went poof. And we're like, whoa, did you see that? And then we kept praying, we kept praying. And then all of a sudden it went from a silver dollar poof, down to a pea. And then we kept praying and then the pee disappeared. And then, and then, and then the boy jumped up out of his mom's arms and said, I wanna go play. And he ran out the church door and started playing soccer with the other kids outside. Thank you, Jesus. But I got home from that trip and I was, I was undone in God. I was just, I was personally, I was just wrecked. And I'd been on missions trips at that point and, and I, you know, God had done all kinds of cool stuff. It's, I'd seen it all, but, I'd, but I got to lead this team and I was just undone because I didn't grow up in, in, a, in a Christian home. I got born again at, at 23. I got born again at a David Hogan meeting. It's just a good idea, I recommend it. And um, uh, me and my brother, and uh, just like fast track into the kingdom, fire of God. David, I remember David laid, pray, laid hands on this lady. She's like 70 years old and she flew, not into a chair, she flew over a chair. <laughs> and uh <laughs> Uh, I was like, all right, well, if this is what the kingdom is, let's go. And, and uh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> that made me forget what I was saying. Oh, so I came back from this trip and um, I was just wrecked. And I was like, God, like, how is it possible that I've been able to experience so much of this to witness your goodness like like a handful of years ago I didn't even know that that you existed let alone all this was possible and listen pre-Jesus listen I was trying to be an all-star for the wrong team right listen I didn't, I didn't have a pedigree I didn't I wasn't you know fifth generation pastor right I was I was starring for the other team and, uh, but Jesus got a hold of me and just started undoing me and just started like dying to self, dying to self, letting go of control, letting go of, 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 of what I thought was best. His ways are higher than our ways. 
God, just have your way. Just use me if you can, if you will. I surrender Jesus. <laughs> give up my reputation. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I give up control. I give up my will. God, just move. What you've done in me, I just want to see you do it in others. And I got home from this trip and I was just undone. I was like, oh, my, in, a, in this five years that I've been, I've just seen you do, this is wild. How is this even possible? Jesus, you know my story. You know where I've been been from you know what I've been through you like how is it possible that you're allowing me to to witness to experience all this and very clearly he responded in her audible voice he responded very clearly and he said this he said it's because you've done a good job at letting me love you wow. <laughs> and it, it 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 blew me away because what I would have expected him to say is because you've done a good job of loving me. But that's not what he said. He said, because you've done a good job at letting me love you. How many people know he's a good father? <laughs> but the key, the question is, the question for me isn't, did I learn to do a good job letting him love me 17 years ago? The question is, am I doing a good job at letting him love me now? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Because if we do, the river just keeps getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Let me share this and then we're gonna, we're gonna pray for some people. Ezekiel 47, if you got a Bible, I hope you got a Bible. Somebody say the river. <laughs> Ezekiel 47. Then he brought me back to the door of the temple and there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple towards the east. For the front of the temple faced east, the water was flowing from under the right side of the temple south of the altar. And he brought me out of the way of the north gate and led me around on the outside to the outer gate that faces east. And there was water running out on the right side. Listen, the water, the river of God is the Holy Spirit. It's his presence. It's his goodness. It's his love. It's his compassion. It's his kindness. It's his overflow. The river is what changes lives. cities and regions. <clears throat> in verse three, and when the man went out to the east with the line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits and brought me through, 1,000 <clears throat> cubits and brought me through the waters. The waters came up to my ankles. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters. The waters came up to my knees. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through. The waters came up to my waist. And he measured 1,000 and it was a river, someone say a river, that I could not cross for the water was too deep. Water in which one must swim, a river that could not be crossed. Then, then in verse seven, uh, so verse, stay with verse six, he said to me, son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river. When I returned, there along the bank of the river were very many trees on one side and the other. And he said to me, this water flows towards the eastern region, goes out down into the valley and enters the sea. When it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. And it shall be that every living thing that moves where the river goes will live. And it goes, and it goes on, obviously, talks about the, the fishermen bringing in a great harvest. And verse 12, along the banks of this river on the side and that will grow all kinds of trees used for food. Their leaves will not wither and their fruit will not fail. They will bear fruit every month because their water flows from the sanctuary because their water flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for 
medicine. Come on, Jesus. Someone say the river of God. <laughs> Now listen, I want to take you on a little journey and then we're going to pray. But Ezekiel is experiencing this encounter with God and the angel of God takes Ezekiel and he introduces him to the river. Some of you are here, some of you have been here at, at Bethel a long, long time, but some of you maybe are newer and God is introducing you to the river. But the, land, the, the, the man, the angel measured a thousand cubits and he took Ezekiel through and how deep was the water? Ankle deep. Which, what does that mean? That means that Ezekiel is experiencing a, a little bit of the flow of God, but he's still anchored in his own strength and ability. <laughs> but Ezekiel doesn't stop there. Ezekiel says, take me deeper. And the man measures again. <laughs> listen, what is that measuring line? I don't know. The Bible doesn't say. But listen, listen, maybe that measuring line is, is this year and then the next is next year. Maybe it's five-year increments. Listen, I'm in the point where I'm like 20-year increments. <laughs> Bill, I'm still burning. <laughs> but I'm not satisfied with my own story. <laughs> I want to be burning 20 years from now. I want to have more stories and more impact and more breakthroughs. I want to have a deeper river tomorrow than I have today. And the man measures again and he takes Ezekiel through. And how deep is the water? Up to his knees. What's happening now? Listen, he doesn't just have his toes in like, ooh, this is nice. This is refreshing, right? It starts to, the current starts to affect. He's like, oh, I can feel that. <laughs> this is starting to move me. <laughs> but he's still anchored. His feet are in the sand. His weight, he's still anchored in his own ability, his own strength. <laughs> but Ezekiel doesn't stop there. Take me deeper. And the man measures again, thousand cubits, and he takes him through. And now how deep is the water? <laughs> Waist deep. You've been waist deep in a swift moving river. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa I think I'm good. <laughs> What's happened? Ezekiel is on the verge of letting go of control. <laughs> but he doesn't stop there. <laughs> but he doesn't stop there but he doesn't stop there. Listen, there's a hurting and broken world that's waiting for you to let go of control. <laughs> there's, a, there's a hurting and broken world that's waiting for you to ask God to take you so deep. <laughs> Ezekiel's on the verge, but he doesn't stop. He says, okay, God, I don't know what's gonna happen next, but take me deeper. And he measures again, and he takes them, and the river is too deep to cross. He has to swim. Well, listen, crossing, listen, I tread through on my own power, my own strength, my own ability, my own gifting, Yep, I'm experiencing the river, but I'm rooted in me. He gets, he gets, when the, he gets to the point where the river's so deep, he has a choice to make. He can either say, okay, God, stop. Or he can uproot his feet and dive in and go, all I can do is go with the flow. <laughs> I have to give up control and let the river take me where it will. But then something amazing happens. Ezekiel gives up control. He says, God, I don't know what's happening, but I give it all to you. Whoosh, here's the river. And when the man puts him back on the bank, now all of a sudden, huh, now there's trees. <laughs> Listen, when he, was, when he was ankle deep, there weren't any trees. When there was knee deep, oh, come on. 
this is better preaching than you're responding. I'm just saying, listen, when he was knee deep, there wasn't any trees. When he was waist deep, there wasn't any trees. When he let go and all he could do was swim, when he comes back to the bank, all of a sudden there's trees and fruit and leaves and medicine and healing and breakthrough. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, God wants to fulfill the purposes that he has put in your heart. But shallow, pur- pur- shallow purposes are fulfilled in shallow waters. Listen, deep purposes are fulfilled in deep waters. But listen, come on. Someone needs to be committed to God to the point where like, God, I'm gonna lock on and not let go and I'm gonna get in the river and I'm gonna go for a swim. Even if it takes more than six weeks to see the breakthrough that I wanna see. Even if it takes more than six months to see the breakthrough. Even if it takes more than six years, God, I am on this journey with you. I'm committed. I'm committed to live in your river, which is the Holy Spirit, which is your presence, which is your goodness, which is your nature that transforms the world. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, ah, Thank you, Jesus. Listen, the enemy wants to lead you to dry places. The enemy, listen, in this, in this day, in this hour in society, the enemy is working overtime to try to get you disconnected from the river. The enemy is like, come on, let's get over political. Let's focus over here. Come on. The, the enemy will throw everything at you. Disappointment, despair, discouragement, <laughs> trial. He'll throw it all at you because he wants you to get isolated and find yourself over here in the desert. <laughs> Listen, what breaks my heart is to know people who, who 10 years ago were in the river and now they're not serving God anymore. Listen, what we need is a people who will be in a covenant with God. Listen, how many people know he made a covenant with you to never leave you or forsake you? A covenant. Listen, what... Listen, what if we approach his river with the covenant? God, I'm married to you. And your river is you. How many people know that it, when marriage is done right, not the world, the way the world's trying to tell us now, it's supposed to be, and when it's done right, you fight for your marriage. Listen, you fight. Listen, when you get married, tell death, do us part. <laughs> What's that mean? That means nothing else. One of us has to die or we are fighting tooth and nail every day to make this happen. Come on. Listen, no distraction, no discouragement. Listen, I'm fighting. No, this is my, listen. I'm committed to be more in love with my wife 20 years from now than I am today. Covenant. Listen, will there be some people in the room? Listen, God doesn't want you just to splash in the river. Listen, I know everyone in the room isn't like in school of ministry, but listen, BSSM shouldn't be something that you did four years ago. Oh yeah, I did that thing. Listen, being in the river of God isn't seasonal. It's covenantial, it's covenantial. I'm gonna get in, I'm gonna stay in, and I'm never gonna get out. I don't care the highs and lows, the trials, the tribulations, the problems, the hurdles, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna stay, and the longer I stay, the deeper it gets. Whoa, listen. You can, you can fast track with God. You can get, you can shake, you get lightning bolts. Listen, you can have, you can have great fruit, but that fruit will never be as deep and as rich as the fruit that you will have 10 years on when you've not gotten out of the river. It just keeps getting deeper and richer 
and better. Will anyone have a covenant with God? Last verse. Oh, come on. I'm just feeling, I'm feeling the stirring of prayer. I'm feeling the stirring of prayer. Come on. Whoa. Will you just pray? Will you just pray this with me right now? Will you just pray this with me? Are you ready? Let's pray this together. Are you ready? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father. Oh, man. I feel fire. Whoa. Oh man, I feel fire. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I feel fire. Oh man, show sure, we're about to have an we're about to have an impart. We're gonna let the river flow. Thank you, Jesus. We're about to have a covenantal recommitment marriage to God and to his Holy Spirit and to his river and to his face and to his goodness. God, it's not just about today or the next two years or three years, God, 20 years from now, I am committed, 40 years, I'm committed. I'm committed right now, God, I'm committed to get in and stay in and never get out. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, Psalms 46, again, verse four, there's a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God. Do you listen? There is a river, this is New King James, there's a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. Do you know in the Hebrew that that word river and that word stream there, they're two different words in Hebrew. The, the word river in Hebrew, the first word river can actually be translated river or stream. So they could have put either there. That's the first word. But the second word that reads stream here is actually irrigation canal. Wow. <laughs> there, listen, there is a river <laughs> that's flowing. There's a river that's flowing. Listen, it, it, it will flow right past the fields that are ripe for harvest. It'll flow right past and, it, and they can wither over there. Listen, it'll flow right past our cities and our towns and our neighborhoods and it'll keep flowing until somebody knows that they have permission as born again sons and daughters to tap that river and dig a canal to be an overflow to be a conduit, to be an outlet valve, to be a fire hydrant, to, to tap that river that says, God, you're not passing by my city. You're not passing by my generation. You're not passing by. I'm tapping into the river and I'm gonna dig a canal to the city of God. Come on, here's Come on, let's just pray again. Thank you, Father. 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 Is there someone who's uh, uh, able to come on the keys or whoa, the guitar, the ukulele, I don't something. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, I feel a specific fire that I feel like I'm a smart, supposed to impart a couple of things, but I feel like that, there's, that there is an anointing for sending. <clears throat> Listen, I want to be clear. You got to know your seasons. I was, here, I was here 14 years before God said it's time to go. It's time to go and start digging a canal. <laughs> Uh, and right at the beginning, I was like, are you sure? It was a little bit of like kicking and screaming. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> but I feel like that there's people who you know inside of you that you are here for a blessed and beautiful and wonderful season. And maybe it's two years, maybe it's 10 years, maybe it's 15 years. But at some point, you know, you have this sense in you that God's going to send you to do something else somewhere else that you're meant to be a canal digger. Whoa. Now listen, I, I was gonna have you come to the front, but there's too many hungry people that already beat you. To, uh, uh, so I'm just gonna ask you to put your hands up. Just, if that's you, listen. That, uh, 
I listen, I don't need like a whole bunch of people to put their hands up. If you feel like in your innermost being, you're like, I believe that God is gonna send me in due time. <laughs> oh man, thank you, Father. All the Bethel church leaders, I was gonna have you guys like come, like, whew. Yeah, just start to float, <clears throat> yeah, all you guys, and just begin. Listen, there's an anointing, right, on these guys in particular. They've been sent out. They've planted churches. They've been leading churches. They've been digging canals. They've been staying in the river. They've been loving God through the highs and the lows and the victories and the hard times and the, yeah. So, uh, yeah, here, I'm just gonna, well, I'm just, yeah, Father. Just give me a second. Uh, whoa. I, I just envisioned, I just envisioned this group coming to the front. So, whoa, I'm just waiting on him. God, whoa, how do you want to do it? Wow. Yeah, there it is. Father, I thank you for the angels of the Lord. <laughs> Listen, if you really, if you really are making a renewed covenant with the Lord, <laughs> You don't need me to touch you, you need him to touch you. So Father, I thank you for the angels of the Lord right now. Listen, it was the angel of the Lord that took Ezekiel and measured the line. Yeah, whew, I, can, I see the angels, yep, yeah, right there. Steve Backlin, Steve right there in the purple sweater right there next to you, yeah, the fire of God is on you. Whew, river, whew. Fire, river, whoo, there it is. Thank you, Father. Yeah, right, whoo, yeah, yeah, uh, right there in the New York hat. Thank you, God. The river of God is on you. Yeah, oh, there it is. Yeah, thank you, Father. Fire of God, whoo, on you in Jesus' name. Fire of God. I don't know if there's some catchers. Oh, yeah, whoo, oh, yeah. Benny, whoa, whoa, more. Wilson and I, whoa, I felt, I felt like, uh, to call you Benny, I feel like the Lord speaks to you, that when he speaks to you intimately, I feel like he calls you Benny. Whew, I just heard the Lord, Benny, the river of God is on you in due season. Show to know your seasons. Yeah, just lift your hands. Father, I'm gonna pray. Father, I thank you for the fire. God, those who are stepping in right now, who are saying, regardless of the highs or the lows, fire of God. Fire of God, come, show. Fire of God, come, in Jesus' name. Fire of God, come. Show more. Fire of God, come, more. Show more. Thank you, Father. Whoa. Yeah, I, more, yeah, I can't get to you, so I'm asking, Holy Spirit, just begin to fall right now. Fall right now, yeah, fall right now. Yeah, there she is, right there. Thank you, Father, whoa, Shh, there she is, a fire of God. Holy Spirit, begin to fall. Now remember, you don't, if you're making a renewed covenant, you don't need me to touch you. Shh, just put your hands up, the angel of the Lord. Wow, he's moving to and fro right now. Woo, fire of his goodness. Yeah, right, wow, right there in the red. Thank you, Father, fire of God. Oh yeah, woo, fire of God, woo, oh my goodness. Whoa, show, oh, thank you, Father, whoa. Oh, fire of God, fire of God, fire of God, fire of God. Fire of God. Yeah, can you just, can you turn up the key, the keys player maybe? And well, I just feel the, the perfume. I feel like he's sealing renewed covenant with the perfume. And listen, I don't know. Jesus, I feel like God, 
I feel like here's what's shifting for some people in this moment. That you stepped into enough agreement with God to say, I'll come. I will come, I will come to the river. I will come, but I feel like there's a shift where a commitment is happening. Where you're saying, God, not only will I come, but today I am coveting with you to never get out. I don't care what my friends do. I don't care what the world does. I don't care what society does. I don't care what the news has to say. I'm getting in and I'm never getting out. Thank you, Father. Right over here, yeah. Show their restricted, restricted movement and mobility, like the shoulders, neck up. God's releasing that right now. God's bringing healing. Does that make sense to someone right here? This area, this area right here, like right here. Someone right in here. Thank you, Jesus. Whoa. Yeah, damage from an accident. Father, we just release healing. Whew, there's the, oh, I feel the rivers over here. Wow. <laughs> Hi, my friends. Whoa, I found my tribe. Uh, show! Whoosh! Whoa! Show more! Whoosh! Whoa! Fire of your goodness! Fire of your goodness! Yeah, power, power, yes. power, 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 power in your togetherness. Power in your togetherness. Power in your covenant. Show. Show. Thank you, Father. We just thank you. Well, you have the angel's wings over this one. The angel's wings, uh, they're both comforting and compelling at the same time. They're like flapping and they're comforting, but also compelling. Whoa, the sending fire of God. Shoo, the sending fire. God, I thank you that he's got a great treasure chest. A great treasure chest is full of great wealth, great treasure, great history with, between you and the Lord is full of gems. <laughs> but he says, Whew, yeah, expand your treasure chest <laughs> because it's not big enough. Wow. Vision not for the next five years, vision for the next 20 and 40. Whoa, sure. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, well, well, fire over you. Yeah, sending, sending, send. nations, nations, nations. Fire of God for the nations. Wow, is there, who in the room you have, feel like you have a call to bring, to impact the medical sphere with the kingdom? Like, just wave at me. I feel like, uh, whoa. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Oh man, it's so crowded. <laughs> just listen, if you're near them, just put your hand up and just gather around. I wanna get my hands on them, but I can't get it. Yeah, wow, wow, fire. More than you could ask, more than you could ask, think or imagine in Jesus' name. <clears throat> listen, Deborah Coombs told me to go for it tonight. Well, so if you don't like what's happening, you can take it up with her. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Listen, the Lord's doing this to you. He's covenanting with you. More than you could have to think or imagine. And he says it's gonna be easier than you think. There's a river, there's a river, there's a river. Listen, listen, I'm gonna, I have to, I'm gonna have to turn it over in a minute, but if you feel like you're still longing, you feel like you're on the precipice, there's something there, but you feel like you haven't, like Ezekiel, you're way steep, but you're like, God, I wanna let go. I wanna go all in. Listen, put your hand on your stomach, on your belly. 
<laughs> this is the translation I said, I read John 7, 38, out of your heart, other translation, out of your innermost being, out of your innermost being, out of your belly. Yeah. Ooh, there, yeah, there's a release. There it is. Yep, there it is. Shoo. Yeah. Yeah, there's a release over that man right there. The red plaid, the man bun. There's a release. Shoo. Ooh. Yeah, Father, I thank you for everyone who's hungry enough uh, to still be here, uh, to still have their hand on their stomach hungry. Father, I thank you. Release. Shh. Release. Release. Freedom. Freedom. <laughs> Listen, here's the release for some of you with your hand on your stomach. You are not supposed to look like the person next to you. Your manifestation with the Lord is meant to be unique. Wow. Listen, he makes us, he created us unique and wonderful on purpose. It's only that our uniqueness all together that we create the full representation of Christ to the world. Listen, you don't have to flop to be surrendered. You just have to be surrendered to be surrendered. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Whoa, whoa, the fire. Whoa, whoa, oh, 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 oh. Whoa, ha. You're a giver. You're a giver with a full barrel. Huh? You're a giver with a full barrel. And I, wow, I see the most unique picture over you, Tom. I see this souped up truck, four wheel drive truck, and I see it leaving the garage. And I feel like that you've been in the workshop with God that you've been there before, you know how to go and you know how to get away, you know how to hide with God for seasons, God. And you say, God, do the work in me that you need to do to accomplish the goal and the plan. But here's the thing, that God has given you such a much greater plan in the last handful of years, the next 20, you know, the next 20 years, what they look like. And you've been like, God, keep me in the garage. Keep me in the garage until you've given me the upgrades that I need. But I tell you, God is saying, you're ready. Yes. Whoa, you're ready. Whoa, you've, you've pulled out of the garage. Whoa, whoa, and you're ready to go. Wow, the highways, the byways. Whoa, the off-roads. Well, the, the places that are, that are highly traveled. The places that haven't already been smoothed out by all the other traffic. Listen, I don't know where I'm going right now, but listen, the places that aren't just, that haven't already been smoothed out. Listen, the, the, no shade, but there's people who just ride the same highways that have been hewn out for years. They go, wow, look how amazing I am. I'm just doing what everybody else has done, but that's not you. <laughs> He's calling you to go places where others haven't gone before the rough roads and the back roads, whoa, whoa. But you're going in style. It's a nice truck, buddy. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, we bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you. Whoa. Well, I don't know where you wanna go from here. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Uh, I haven't visited my friends over here yet. Oh yeah, whoa, it's on you. Shoo, fire of God. Woo, what you speak will be heard. Whoa, yeah, the prophetic unction, the f there's fire on your voice and on your words. 
There's a prophetic anointing, a prophetic anointing, a prophetic unction. There's a decree, a prophetic decree anointing on you. Whoa, Shoo-hoo. Yeah, and I, and I mean this in a good way. It's not always polished. It doesn't always come out gentle. It comes out with a force and it comes out with a gushing. There's an anointing that comes on you that you declare and decree. And then after you're done, you have to ask someone to tell you what you just said, because God comes and takes over. Fire of his goodness over you. Fire. Whoa, Father. Oh, God, I just thank you. I just feel an anointing. Just over here, put your hands up. I just feel an anointing. Listen, all over the room. I feel an anointing. I think I'm done after this. I feel an anointing to fall in love with the river. Yes, God. Because listen, the river for some of us in the room up to this point has just been imagery. But tonight God is shifting it. He's making it a person. Father, I thank you for an anointing to fall in love with the river, God. Yeah, God, to renew or to make covenant with you and your Holy Spirit. To explore your depths, God, to get in and to never get out, God. And we thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Wow, wow. Can we thank Pastor Joaquin? And I really wanted to end tonight celebrating in the river. Can we play this song? How many of you want completely submersed in the river of God? Amen. Go ahead and stand up and we're going to jump in the river. If you haven't already, we're going to jump in his river.
Y'all have behaved well. In the kingdom, the way the river increases is through thanksgiving and giving it away. So why don't you put your hand on the person next to you and just say this dangerous prayer. More, Lord. More, Lord. <laughs> you can never overdose on the river of God. More, God. More, God. More. 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 The answer to depression is more, Lord. The answer to anxiety is more, Lord. The answer to fear, more, Lord. More of you. More, God. More. 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 Come, Holy Spirit. Say, come, Holy Spirit. More, God. <laughs> So good. So good. Bless y'all. Have a good night. Go give it away.